Hello everyone, I'm Justice Graves and this is my channel and welcome. Today we are going to talk about something that I have been hinting at that I would start during the week after the election, the annual town election for the town of Templeton that just happened for a while now. And that is we are going to talk about Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised, the 12th edition, which I have right here with me. Ta-da! What that means is that this is going to be the introductory video for a long playlist on this that is going to be titled about Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised. It'll be in the playlist for the channel, and this is, of course, the introductory video for it. This introductory video is simply going to be an overview. There'll be a few things that I sort of hint at will, that will be in discussion as we go through, but we are going to do videos for every single chapter in the book, slash every single section, if a chapter is way too dense, we'll break it up by sections. There are over up there about 23 chapters in Robert's Rules of Order. And for those of you who don't know, Robert's Rules of Order is the gold standard for parliamentary procedure for most organizations, committees, and boards in the United States of America. It has been around for all over a century. It's been over since like the 1870s, I believe. What year? 1876 has been used as a compilation and a sort of clarification of different parliamentary procedures that came over from England when different organizations were really establishing themselves in the United States and all of the different features that come with that. So without further ado, so this is going to be done in a presentation format. All of the videos will be done like that since it's over 23 chapters. We, well, since it is 23 chapters, there's going to be over 20 videos, including this video and the conclusion video, so just be aware of that. And what else am I thinking of? I am not a lawyer, obviously. I want to make that very clear that this is just summarizing the book as is. We're not going to go into every single citation, but at the end of every single chapter that we go over, or major sections if we have to break it up like that, what I will do is I will have the major citations listed at the end that I will briefly discuss in turn that I think are the most important to have, especially if you are in a government body or an elected official. Robert's Rules of Order happen to be the rules of order for my organization with the Narragansett Regional School District School Committee. There are others such as the Templeton Select Board that also have to follow them. The Phillipston Select Board, I believe, also has to follow them, this Board of Selectmen of Phillipston and other different groups and organizations and other school boards and school committees also have to follow them. These videos are going to strictly be about the procedures and the rules themselves. They are not going to be about any policy discussions. I just wanted to make that clear. And I may bring in, at times, some real-world discussions depending on what is going on. So I don't know why I just grabbed that, but I was going to look at something and describe something, but we can bring that up in just a bit. I'm going to now switch over to the presentation, Introduction to Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised 12th edition. Chapter 1 is about the Deliberative Assembly, its types and their rules, their nature. Section 1 is about the Deliberative Assembly, it is about their nature, the types of them, and the applicability of parliamentary rules in modified situations. It also talks about what I'm calling the four major rights of somebody who is a member of an assembly or a member of a committee. Those rights are as follows. The rights to attend a meeting, the rights to make a motion on the floor, the right to speak and debate, and the right to vote. And those four rights, those entitlements, if you will, no matter what, unless an individual member is in a disciplinary proceeding, disciplinary proceedings are covered in chapter 23, which is the last chapter in Robert's Rules, they cannot be taken away and you can't get rid of those. Those can't be eliminated at all. Those are the rights of a general member in an assembly. It's the right that I have as an elected official. It's the right that other people and other governing bodies have as elected officials. They have the right to do those things. Section 2 are the rules of an assembly or an organization, the charters, the constitutions, the bylaws, the rules of order, the standing rules, and the customs. We'll talk about precedence and what supersedes what in that section. Section 3, Basic Provisions and Procedures. That's all under Chapter 2, Conduct of Business in a Deliberative Assembly, Composition, Formalities, Orders of Business, or the Call of Order, or the Business of the Day, Bringing Up New Business, and Obtaining the Floor for Debate. 
Section four is the handling of emotion, making emotion, basic steps of emotion, passing emotion, and the relation of other emotions to the main motion. Chapter three is the description of motions in all classifications. Section five is specifically about the basic classifications in the order of precedence of motions, the classes of motions, and then there are called secondary motions. Secondary motions, I'm not gonna make a whole analogy for it, but basically when you have a main motion on the floor, that is the question before the assembly or the membership. And you can make other special types of motions underneath it that don't necessarily affect it or change the question at hand. But I will leave that to when we get to that discussion. Section six is the description of classes and individual motions, which again, we'll talk about with the secondary and the subsidiary motions, main motions, subsidiary motions, privilege motions, incidental motions, and bringing a question back up. Section 7 is standard descriptive characteristics of motions. Chapter 4, meeting and sessions. Section 8, our meeting session, recess and adjournment, all of those definitions. Section 9 is particular types of business meetings, the regular, special, adjourned, annual, the executive session. I will be talking about on this channel open meeting law and within open meeting law, the executive session. These are two different discussions. This is executive sessions within Robert's Rules of Order not necessarily within the Massachusetts general laws, although there will be similarities that you'll probably notice. Public sessions and electronic meetings are also discussed. Chapter five, the main motion discusses everything about the main motion, a main motion on the floor, a main motion up for discussion. Chapter six, subsidiary motions. Section 11, to postpone a question indefinitely. Section 12 is to amend a motion. Section 13 talks about committing or referring a motion. Section 14 is about postponing a question to a certain time. Section 15 is about limiting or extending the limits of debate. There can be limits on debate, but every member has the right to speak. Remember, it's one of the four fundamental entitlements or rights of a member in an assembly. Section 16 is referring to a previous question or about the previous question, meaning that you can bring up an old question, but there's rules about that. Section 17 is laying something on the table, which means to interrupt the pending business so as to permit doing something else immediately that comes up for discussion. So let's go to chapter seven, privilege emotions. The business for the day is, chap is section 18. Section 19 is to raise a question of privilege. We'll talk about what that means later on. Section 20 is what is a recess. Section 21 is adjournment. And section 22 is to fix the time to which to adjourn, which means that you can set meeting limits for meetings must go to 10 o'clock, must stop at 10 o'clock. If you want to go past 10 o'clock, then you need to do a, you need to do a, a roll call vote on it. And then the majority rules, and then you can go past 10 o'clock PM. So, chapter eight, incidental motions. Section 28, 23 is about points of order. Section 24 is about appeals. Section 25 is how to suspend the rules the rules of parliamentary procedure. You cannot suspend bylaws or a constitution that is illegal. Section 26, objection to the consideration of a question. Section 27, division of a question, which is important. Section 28, consideration by paragraph or seratum. Section 29, division of the assembly. Section 30, motions relating to methods of voting and polls. Section 31, motions relating to nominations. Section 32, request to be excused from a duty, and section 33, requests and inquiries. So chapter nine, motions that bring a question again before the assembly. Section 34, take from the table. Section 35, rescinding, amending something previously adopted, rescinding and expunging from the minutes. Section 36, discharging a committee, and section 37, reconsidering or reconsider and enter on the minutes. Chapter 10, renewal of motions. I told you this is a lot of stuff. This is just a, the review. The reason why I'm doing this review and I'm trying not to interrupt myself here. So that way you'll know which chapter you probably wanna go on. I recommend that everybody at least listens to my discussion on chapter one. Everything else, just choose what you want based on what you're seeing on the screen right now when we get to those and when those are released. So chapter 10, renewal of motions, dilatory and improper motions. Section 38 is the renewal of motions, renew non-renewability during the same session with some exceptions, conditions that may impede renewal at a later session. Section 39, dilatory and improper motions. 
All right, chapter 11 is a quorum, the order of business and related concepts, section 40. What is a quorum? The rules, how do you enforce it, and how do you call a group together, section 41 of the orders of business, orders of the day, the agenda, or program. Chapter 12, assignment of the floor and debate. Section 42 are the rules governing assignment of the floor, recognition of a member, and interruption of a member. Section 43, rules governing debate. The summary, the length, the number of species, modification on the limits, decorum, rules against the chair's participation in debate justifying brief discussion outside of debate and debatability of motions. Some motions, such as adjournment, are not debatable. So when it go so when a motion to adjourn goes on the floor, just so a quick understanding of that, you must go into roll call vote otherwise, or you must go into a vote um, that's not debatable. Chapter 13 is voting. Section 44, the basis for determining a voting result. There are such things such as majority vote, two-thirds vote, modifications, plurality, and tie votes. Section 45 is voting procedure, the rights and obligations, the regular method of voting on motions, and other methods of voting. All right, this is Chapter 14, nominations and elections. Section 46, pretty standard. Chapter 15, officers' minutes and officers' reports. Chapter 47, Section 47 is all about who are the officers of an elected body or appointed officers and consultants and how to deal with vacancies. Section 48 are the minutes and reports of officers. Chapter 16, boards and committees. Section 49 is all about what is a board. Section 50, what is a committee? Section 51, reports of boards and committees. Section 52, committee of the whole and its alternate forms. It's a whole other thing that we'll have to discuss at that time. Chapter 17, Mass Meetings, Organization of a Permanent Society. Section 53 are mass meetings. Mass meetings are a different type of meeting that may constitute everybody in the general public. You could even call it such as like an annual town meeting or an open town meeting. You know, I'm just over generalizing what Section 53 is talking about. Section 54, Organization of a Permanent Body. And Section 55, Mergers, Consolidations, and the Dissolution of Societies. It's pretty straightforward or straightforward that you know what that would be. Section chapter 18, discussions on bylaws, which usually bind boards and other higher organizations, such as towns, such as the towns of Templeton and Phillips and have bylaws that the boards of selectmen or that the select boards must follow. Section 56, and those supersede, um, those supersede Robert's Rules of Order. Section 56, content and composition of the bylaws, and section 57, how do you amend bylaws, or what is the usual standard for amending bylaws. All right, chapter 19, conventions, section 58, conventions of delegates. I've been to a convention and a voting convention before. Basic provisions in the bylaws, the convention members, and the alternates, and a caucus. Section 59, organization of a convention of an established society. And section 60, conventions not of a permanent society. All right, and then this is chapter 20, disciplinary ooh, disciplinary procedures. Section 61, discipline of members and guests, dealing with offenses in a meeting, offenses elsewhere than in a meeting slash trials. Section 62, removal from office and other remedies. And section 63, investigation and trial. Rights of the society and the accused, steps in a fair disciplinary process and committee on discipline. We're gonna switch back. That those are all of the sections that we're going to talk about with regards to Robert's Rules, which again I have right here in case you wanted to see it again. Where you can get it is in the description, and that is that. Choose once those many videos. So I thought there were 23 sections. There's only 20 sections. Uh, 20 chapters, not sections. My bad. There's 63 sections in Robert's Rules. There are 20 chapters. The way that this book is organized, that you understand how citations work, it is more important to do a citation with section and paragraph than it is to do a page number because across all electronic formats and such, it is organized by citation, by section, and then by paragraph number rather than by page. In fact, if you were to read into this book, Page numbers are actually on the inside, like the inside inside of the book, not on the outside flap. Usually, we're not on the outside flap where you usually read, but they're on the inside. So, for example, like inside where the crease is in the book, where the binding is, it's not on the outside where you can quickly flip through. The outside where you can quickly flip through on the sides 
has everything for what citation. So like section one or section one, paragraph four. And sometimes if you see proper citations of Robert's rules, you'll see a parentheses after that. We'll go over citations in the first chapter, which is the one that I recommend you see anyway, as your first introduction to what we are talking about. So that's just an overview, a few little things that I throw in here and there, not really much that I can discuss without going into too much detail that would make this video last way too long. But I hope that that was interesting. Like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you like this kind of content. and. That is all I got. That is the video. I hope I see you guys soon. I really appreciate your viewership. Thank you.